Hello, how do you easily prove that for a spherical mirror, the focal length is half the radius? Right, this is gonna show you how to very easily prove that. So let's just take a sphere first. Any sphere. Right, and then let's draw a straight line. That's the principal axis, correct? And let us call this point here as the center of curvature. This point is pole. Somewhere between C and P, there is a focus F. So what do we know about uh, spherical mirrors in physics? In physics, we know that incident rays parallel to the principal axis after reflection pass through the focus simple enough so let us draw a parallel ray again a parallel ray like this now this ray after reflection will pass through the focus so let's draw it like this it will pass through the focus Correct. Let me just uh, see shift this end to manage the diagram. Yes, correct. So now <clears throat> this is a ray, incoming ray. After a reflection, it will pass through the focus. Correct. Let's call this point X. Right. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to join the center C with X. Correct. So let's again do that. Let me join a line like this. And let, let me fix it to the center. Right. Are we clear? So now let me enlarge this. Okay, so that we can all see it properly. So now this is the incident ray. After reflection, it has passed through the focus. Now, <clears throat> C is the center of curvature. So Cx is basically what? The radius of the sphere, which is always normal to the spherical surface right so that means this is the normal if you extend this line you can consider that to be the normal at the point of contact contact of x so now if this angle is i which is the angle of incidence this angle was will also be i that is the angle of reflection right so now what happens is this ray consider this line let's take another point let's call that point to be uh let's call this point as w now consider the the line wx is basically parallel to cp and cx is the transversal so this angle i is going to be the same angle here i transversal interior alternate angles and they right so this angle is also i now this angle is also I from the first law of reflection. Now you can see that in the triangle C F X, this is basically an iso isoscale triangle. So the angle F C X is the same as angle F X C. So from basic geometrical deduction, we can say that this side is equal to this side so basically cf is equal to fx correct and this holds true for any point on the sphere for any point y what will happen if you draw another a, a parallel ray coming here getting incident will ultimately pass through the focus whatever angle it you know then you draw a line cy and that angle could be you know theta any angle theta so basically in that case also you you will find eventually that cf is the same as fy so basically any point you take on the sphere 
for any point you can say that for any point x this is for any point x on the spherical surface cf is equal to fx that we can show let us call that cf equals to fx or if cf equals to fx let's call that let's say that let's take cf to be what uh, again let's not do that because that would be a violation of the sign convention coordinate sign convention but let's do it properly right imagine that any point for any point cf equals to fx for the if that point is pole itself because pole is a point on the spherical surface if x is p so you can say if x is p then cf will be the same as fp isn't it so from pole to f from pole to f if you go like this in this direction let us call this to be f right focal length f if fp equals to f that implies cf is also equal to fp is also equal to f that means cf plus fp equals to f plus f which is 2f isn't it but cf plus fp is what c f plus f p this entire length is equal to c p which is what the radius of curvature isn't it this entire distance is called the radius of curvature by definition so c a plus f p is c p which is the radius of curvature that is 2 f hence we can say that r equals to 2 f that also means that f equals to r by 2 simple have a nice day bye bye